Congratulations, you made it back. Alchemists, you are amazing, you know it. Alchemist Nation is the place we all hang out to get better and to make more money, but by doing it the right way. That's right, in creating income, not working for a living. But so here's what we're doing today, all right? You know what, everybody always says, hey, don't put your eggs in all in one basket. Well, in Alchemist Nation, we do put our eggs in one basket. Why? Because we want to do things faster, better, be more efficient, right? So what I'm going to tell you right now is put your eggs in, a, in, a, in one basket and don't be a chicken, all right? Just do it. Hey, if you're going to be anything, be a rooster. Guard that egg. Guard those baskets. Guard them. But you know what? Somebody could talk about that a lot better, and that is the guy, the co-founder of Alchemist Nation, Walter Amarillo, the man, the myth, the legend, Walter Amarillo, take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. Let's give Stephen Beaver a round of applause. I love it, my man. Welcome back, Alchemist Nation. We are going through Wealth Principle number four. If you've been on the Wealth Principle journey for the last few years, you know what we do here. We're doubling our income and we're doubling our net worth. Hence the camera if you're still committed to the cause. Who here has been with us for the last four seasons? This is season number four for you. Hence, Cam, if you've been here since the origin. origin. We got Ron, Darina, Alicia has been here. Oh, so let's give our, our, our like OGs a big round of applause for showing up four years in a row, doubling their income, doubling their net worth. Uh, three years. Hence, Cam, if you've been here for three years, been running with us that long. Excellent. Two years. My two year folks. Excellent. And what about one year? Who's been here for at least a year or more? yourselves around and what about the people who are just jumping in who, who is here for the first time first time you've been on this call awesome let's give lauren a round of applause and ronnie <laughs> welcome to the game so uh the 52 wealth principles came to me not as an overnight success they came to me when i was living in las vegas on a meditational journey for three months i was like moses but instead of going out to the desert with no food and water i went out to the desert with all the bright lights and the casinos and lots of food and water I did, however, fast. Who here has fasted before? Has anybody ever fasted? I didn't fast for 40 days. What I did is I first fasted for three days, then I fasted for seven days. And on day number seven, before I ate, I wrote down this, this uh, script of all the different principles that I'd studied. It was actually 104 principles, and I had to combine a lot of them into uh, the ability to be in one week. See, the wealth principles are designed so you can use them functionally in your business one win principle per week. Uh, principle number one was think a million. Hence, Cam, if you're here to make a million dollars or more or add another million to your already existing income streams, awesome, good. For anybody who's not interested in making a million dollars, now's the time to log off. You're not part of the tribe. You're not interested in what we're doing. We're totally fine with you being gone doing something else like washing the dishes or cutting your grass because the rest of us have a purpose in life. We're looking to make more money. Hence, Cam, if you're committed to serving more people as you earn more money. Excellent, excellent. And before we go any further, hence, Karen, if you're committed to doing all your deals morally, ethically, and legally, hence, Karen, if that is true for you, solemnly swear. Awesome. So you can stay on. For anybody else, uh, they're gone already. So these wealth principles have worked. When I was in Vegas, I, I came up with this strategy of delivering them one week per, uh, one principle per t a week. And they were not for you at the time. At the time, they were actually just for me. It was just so I could have a weekly plan of how I was going to tackle my business and continuously increase it because I made a commitment to double my net worth and double my income. It wasn't until about a year later that I started doing something called the wholesaling boot camp, And that's where I started teaching how people could wholesale real estate so that I could get more deals. I was completely, and I'll be 100% honest with you, it was so focused on me. I mean, everybody was asking me to teach wholesaling. And at the first, I didn't realize why I was going to do it. And then I saw I could get deals. And so I started teaching wholesaling. Hans Kampf, you know, there's a lot of gurus out there teaching wholesaling. It's not so you can make money. It's 100% because it makes them deals. Wholesaling is one of the hardest things on the planet to do and be profitable. So now I don't teach wholesaling. What I do teach, however, is getting rich, getting wealthy, passive income. Who here is committed to... $10,000 a month passive income, no matter what. You got to at least have that. that that's got to come in no matter what. That's non-negotiable. Excellent. Wealth principle four is called, uh, is 
comes from a lot of different people. The first time I heard it was actually Warren Buffett. But after doing some research, I identified some other people who had also come across this principle and started sharing it. But before I share why putting all your eggs in one basket is so important, and Stephen alluded to the concept, I want to impart upon you why it's so wrong not to. Uh, in this world, we get a lot of advice and a lot of suggestions from a lot of broke people. Hence, care if you know, broke people give more advice than rich people. Yes. Now, here's what's interesting. Rich people will only give advice when asked. Broke people will give advice whether you ask or not. Who's heard that? Who's seen that already? Just a bunch of people just giving you advice. You, you didn't even ask them. You just said, hey, I'm looking to be an entrepreneur. And they're like, oh, man, entrepreneurs, like, you know, one out of three businesses fail. Like every, you know, a business only lasts like seven years. They seem to have all these stats of how your business will be doomed from day one. Hans Kim, if you've already experienced this, sharing your dreams, your goals with someone close to you, friend or family. And it was not very encouraging. It also, they also didn't give you any structural, like constructive uh, criticism or constructive tools. They just said, it's not going to work out. You should do something else. As if they know what you're capable of, as if they know how hard you're going to study and how hard you're willing to work and how deep you're already into it by the time you finally told them. Hence the camera, if you know you're deep in this, you're all the way in. Awesome. Give yourselves a round of applause for showing up. All right. So, uh, Millionaire Wealth Principle, uh, number four, this comes after principle one, which was think a million, it's got to be a million dollar business. Then the principle number two, which we combined together this year, choose a business that can make a million dollars. And then last week, we talked about the four types of money that was flow, equity, profit, and income. All four were different, and they're built intentionally for your business. Every business has them, whether you understand them by those terms or not. But once we're diving into this, and then we've committed to a business, by the way, hence came if you've already committed to a business, you know, the one you're going to be doing, you know, your one single flow. Awesome. If you haven't, to the extent that you are not increasing your income, or doubling it every year, that could be the reason you too many different distractions, too many different flows. So I want you to focus on one. This principle is put all your eggs in one get basket and guard that basket. Now, most people will tell you the opposite. This is the advice that I received for years and years. Who's seen this advice? Don't put your eggs in one basket. Who's heard this from really smart people, right? Financial planners. You've heard it from your family. You've heard it from people who seem to know what they're talking about. And they'll come to you with this advice in order to protect you. True or true? Hence, if you've been told this in order to protect you from the dangers of a deal not working out, right? Something, something going wrong or something not happening in the way that you planned it for it. Well, is there's a story behind don't put your eggs in one basket. Who knows the story? Who would you like to hear the story of how this principle came to be? This, um, this, what are they called? Uh, it's a truism idiom. By the way, idiom rhymes with idiot. Who, who can kind of put that together, right? Idiom, this kind of idiotic. So this idiom of don't put your eggs in one basket started because people were collecting their their eggs from all their different hens and putting them into a basket. And the concept was if the basket broke or if you fell or it dropped, you'd lose all the eggs. They would be, they would fall. So what people used to do is they take multiple trips from the hen house to the farm so that they wouldn't lose all their eggs. Hence the camp, if you recognize it takes longer, it's a process, but it does diversify from a problem of dropping eggs. So it's good advice for egg handlers people who handle their eggs, but it's not good advice for people who are building a business. It's also, here's another one. It's good for investors who have made a lot of money because protecting your money is a good strategy when you have money. Who here knows that if you don't have money, you don't need money protecting strategies. You need money growing strategies. So putting all your eggs in one basket is only valuable if you're looking to protect, if you're looking to stop the growth and also stop the risk of your investments. This, uh, this was turned on its head by uh, Mark Twain. Mark Twain is the first uh, poet to kind of uh, go and turn this uh, idiom on its head. And he said, behold, the fool saith, put not all thine eggs in one basket. By the way, I have no idea if that's how he spoke, but here's, here's how we're going to run this. He says, uh, which is but a matter of saying, scatter your money and your attention. But the wise man saith, put all your eggs in one basket and watch that basket. And now Mark Twain is a pretty smart guy. But the first time I heard this was not from Mark Twain. I actually heard it from Warren Buffett, who ironically was sitting in an investor call, an investor meeting. And he says, now I'm not sure who said this. He says, I think it was Mark Twain that said it. He said, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Uh, he said, put all your eggs in one basket and guard that basket. 
Fear also knows that if you Google Warren Buffett and you put, type in, you know, eggs in a basket, you'll find more quotes that say, don't put your eggs in a basket. Thanks, Karen, if you know that to be true. If you haven't done the research already, Warren Buffett has said, don't put your eggs in one basket more times than he has said, put all your eggs in one basket and guard that basket. And the reason being is that this is a very qualified piece of advice. So if you are not a business owner, this advice is not for you. If you are not a business owner, you're going to miss out on one of the greatest opportunities to capitalize on this current existing recession, to sell the picks and shovels to all of the people who don't know what they're doing. Hence, care if you know, this is an opportunity to sell picks and shovels. And if you know that story, the people who sold the picks and shovels in the gold rush made all the money while the people who were digging for gold lost all the money and then did all the work. So the people who owned the equipment afterwards and the land afterwards were able to go and find the gold just by doing a little bit of prospecting. Who's read the book, Three Feet from Gold or heard the story? Awesome. So it's the same concept. What Mark Twain was talking about and what Warren Buffett was talking about is it only makes sense to put all your eggs in one basket if you're talking about a business. The people who diversify their businesses and diversify their income streams end up with a more stable amount of money, but it will always be a lesser or lower degree of income. When it's a business, if your thoughts are diversified, you may reduce your ability to drive towards the marketplace. I was talking to Larry Steinhaus about this. He's got a lot of different products. Which, and this was one of the conversations. He's a coach. He's got a lot of different products. He teaches all these different ways to, to build your wealth. But he didn't have a singular approach. He didn't have a single market. So his marketing strategy had to be across these four or five different strategies. And so he was reaching out to these four or five different people. And so there was confusion in the marketplace a lack of clarity around who he was and what his brand stood for. In fact, his brand is, maybe he still is, investor schooling. Hans, can't you recognize that doesn't say anything about real estate, even though he's extremely proficient in real estate. And that's what he's most known for within his circle. And it's what he's most passionate about and where most of his money comes from. Hans, can't you recognize that could be a challenge for an amazing coach and teacher and trainer, unless they get laser focused. It's the same thing that could be happening in your business. I'm going to go a little further on the quotes, because I think that although Warren Buffett's great, uh, Andrew Carnegie is somebody who I respect and admire because he built a lot of great businesses. He also said, put all your eggs in one basket and watch that basket. He's a business owner. Andrew Carnegie built one of the largest businesses even today to have ever existed and changed the entire country. Hence, care if you've heard his name and understand he was the steel magnate. This guy controlled steel, controlled the railways. He controlled the buildings that were being built with steel. He single-handedly changed the entire country just by introducing a new way to produce this product and then scaled it up by buying out the other people in steel. He created the largest steel monopoly on the in the in the world at the time. That only comes because he said, I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to put all my eggs in one basket. And then when somebody competed with him, he would protect his basket by going and either buying them out or building a business that was better or faster than his competition. Hence, can't you recognize you may have to do the same thing over the next few years in your business. You've got to continue to complete, uh, compete. Now, it wouldn't be a full quote if I didn't go and steal something from Elon Musk. Elon Musk, again, said, it's okay to have your eggs in one basket as long as you control what happens to that basket. I just can't figure saying now we're getting a little closer to the concept of what this guarding thing is. So putting all your eggs together is only good if you know how to protect them. It's only good if you're actually in the right industry. It's only good if you actually are the right person who will guard and protect and control what happens to the outcome of that business. Who is absolutely committed to protecting their family? Themselves. Excellent. So then through extension, your business which feeds your family and yourself and protects you financially and gives you options. So having one business was a much better strategy than diversifying. We've all heard of Richard Branson, right? Richard Branson, the man who's known for having 400 businesses. Hence, can't we know that name? Sir Richard Branson, right? The, the man who was uh, sworn in by the queen herself. I'm gonna go through something that I found online. I thought it was fantastic. There's uh, five billionaires that we're gonna review. First is Richard Branson. The second is Cuban, uh, Sheldon L Adelson, Eric Lefkowski, and Elon Musk. And what I'm going to show you is a path to their businesses, the path with which they followed to their success. Hands the camera if I got your attention right now, if you're interested. 
All right. So the reason I share this is because the idea of all these different ideas, like ideas are valuable is I think a lie. Your ideas are worth shit. The only thing that is valuable is your execution of a singular idea. It is not your execution of a lot of ideas because again, that is shit. The only thing worth value to you, it doesn't even have to be your idea. Who has heard of an entrepreneur who built an idea that wasn't theirs, right? Like, I, I know every single billionaire on the planet has at least a thousand people who are like, that was my idea. He stole who's who can he's watched the movies, right? Seen the movies. McDonald's is the perfect one in my mind. It's like this guy had nothing to do with McDonald's. He didn't even build the first one. He didn't even build like the first couple. Like he just came in afterwards and said, this is going to change the world. Elon Musk is not the creator of Tesla. Little known fact. He came in as an investor in Tesla and then scaled it up, took it to the next level. Hands to the camera if you're ready to dive into why or how these paths were delivered. Awesome. So let's start off. I'll, I'll scan down really quickly so you can see Richard Branson, right? Probably one of the most famous people before Elon Musk as a billionaire. Look at how long his trail to get to the billion dollars is. Look at Cuban, how long his trail is to get there. Sheldon Adelson, there, now the trail's getting shorter as we go. Elon, one, two, three, four, five, six points. I just can't really understand. Focus, laser focus. And by the way, Richard Branson kept all his businesses, which is why it took him so damn, it's why he's got the gray hair. Look at this guy, beautiful gray hair. And Elon still got a full head of hair. <laughs> he's much younger, much richer. So Elon's story, and I'm going to go through Elon instead of you guys, who would like to see access to this? Who would like this actual uh, infographic? Awesome. I stole it from somebody, so I can send it over to you uh, as long as you give me credit for sharing it with you. <laughs> and I guess this person, uh, Annie Vital, you can just, whatever, whoever she is. So Elon Musk, he started with video games. Who knows? He started with a video game that he he sold for like 100,000, 100, 000, 100 uh, it was some small dollar amount, like $10,000, $14,000 when he was younger. Then he shifted into a company called Zip2. And what Zip2 did was they took uh, businesses and they put them online. It was kind of like the Google My Business of the day. It was like the early start for newspapers. And he sold that business for a decent sum, but he didn't own all of the business. Again, another principle. He was there for four years. He sold many shares to the company. And I believe he walked away with about a hundred. Uh, the company was sold for a hundred thousand. I think he walked away with about $20,000 from the uh, $20 million. It was sold for $100 million. He walked away with about $20 million, somewhere in that ballpark. Then he starts x.com. x.com is PayPal. He stays in that business for, again, four years. No distractions, nothing else going on. He wasn't like, I'm a wholesaler and a flipper and a buy and hold guy, and I do rehabs, and I also am a real estate agent. Hence, and I'm also a coach. Hence, can't you recognize he wasn't all these different things. Right? Who here knows a bunch of people who do all those different things? And a property manager, right? And a contractor. <laughs> and I also have an Etsy shop where I sell my craft furniture. That's scary if you recognize there's a lot of distractions out there. There's, you can, you're so talented. You can do so many things. That doesn't make you rich. Focus on one individual talent, one individual skill set. And even better if it's not your talent. Even better if it's not your skill set. Even better if you've got a partner who knows the thing so that you can go sell and scale. By the way, you're going to see that sell and scale is more profitable than being the person doing the thing, unless you've got the partner who's got the ability to sell and scale. Hands to the camera if you're committed to being either the person who does it or the person who sells or scales. Awesome. All right. So then. He goes and he builds PayPal, sells that for a ridiculous amount of money to Hewlett Packard. I think it was in the billions, uh, 1 billion or something like that. He walks away with over $100 million. He buys some fancy car. He splits his money up into Tesla and SpaceX and then drives hard on Tesla's improvement with his team mindset wise and spends most of his time over in SpaceX. Tesla obviously makes him rich as hell. The contracts with the government that they're now sending up something every three days also makes him rich as hell. And somewhere along the line, he invests in his brother's business for solar panels. Invests passively, not actively. Hans Kahn, if you're now catching that Elon Musk is the faster model because he's done one business at a time. And only when he was rich, he diversified across. Now he you know, owns a boring company as well. Three or four different companies at a single point. 
And yet you're over here trying to run three or four different companies before becoming, uh, we'll call it a deca millionaire, right? 10 million. We recognize this is a flawed system. It's a flawed plan because of flawed mindset. We believe our thoughts matter. We believe that our ideas are important. Your thoughts only create your reality. Your thoughts create your reality. They are not important though. They are only important if they are creating the reality you desire. Your ideas are not important unless they're the ideas that lead towards your singular purpose, your singular intention, your singular mission or reason for being on this planet. The thing, by the way, here's another one. You'll piss me off with this one. I want to do what I'm passionate about. I don't give a shit what you're passionate about. I, I care that you do what pays you so you can do what you're passionate about. If you're passionate about your business, there's a good chance it's not making money. If you're passionate about your business, there's a good chance it's exciting to you. Until your business is boring, you will not be able to scale. Until your business is boring, you will not be able to take it to the next level. Until you know it so well that you're not interested in doing it anymore, you will not be able to take that business to the next level. So I don't want to hear that you're passionate about your business. I don't give a shit about where your passion is. I want to hear how committed you are. I want to know how disciplined you are to show up every day to do something that is no longer something you're passionate about. Because the passion will fade. The love of the project, the love of the business will fade. Hands to the camera if you have lost love for another human being at some point. At some point, you were like, I loved them so much when we met. And now I don't. I love not being around them, right? Who here has lost love for themselves at some point? Just feeling, like, man, like, I don't even know if I love the person I'm in right now. Like, fuck. So love is not something we can rely on to build a business. Anybody saying that is a fool, is an idiot, is a liar, is somebody who's in disillusion or trying to sell you something. Be careful with that. Because if they're trying to sell you something, they're like, well, this, don't you love this? No shit. Anybody who hears something for the first time gets excited and wants to, wants to do the new exciting thing. Where the money is, is in the boring stuff. It's putting all your eggs into one basket and building your skill set, building your team, building your assets so they keep driving you forward towards a singular purpose, a singular goal. Who here would love to create something massive and powerful and a legacy for themselves, a legacy for their family that will protect the wealth of their family for generations and generations? You and me both, I agree. The only way to do that is to commit. And I don't mean like small commitments. Who here has had commitment issues growing up? Like couldn't commit to the woman, couldn't commit to the guy, couldn't commit to the career, couldn't commit. Fucking you went to college and you're like, oh, I'm in general studies. Or you took psychology. What the fuck were you thinking? Right? Like, come on, like commit. Just decide what you're going to do. And if it's happened there, it happens in the next career. It happens in the next business. It happens in the next relationship. Commitment issue, commitment issue, commitment issue. It wasn't until I decided to commit to one thing in all aspects of my life that success started to show up. For instance, my physical body. Decided to go to the gym. One commitment, I show up every day. And it has physically changed. Look, biceps, guns. Now I made a commitment to do legs every day. I will finally have a pair of legs, which previously I was just a man floating in the air and these thin little sticks were walking underneath me. Hence, care if you know, you don't want to be a bird, right? <laughs> so what if your business, what if your relationships have been built on those that same sort of fundamental flaw of I focus so hard on this one aspect that I forgot to build the base, forgot to build the legs, forgot to build something that would sustain me in, in a case of a situation occurring in, in your relationship or in your business. By diversifying your focus, you have forgotten the ability to strengthen yourself, to, to move yourself towards through a recession. Who here found the recession and kicked them on in the teeth a little bit, gave them a little, a little shock in one of their businesses, all right, a little, a little bruising here and there. But if you'd focused and stayed focused on your singular business, that business would have been prepared for it. True or true? If you'd, if you'd been hyper-focused on your business, on protecting your business, on making sure your business was recession-proof from the beginning, this recession never would have had an impact. You would have seen it coming because you were so focused on making sure that the business was always moving forward, no matter what the market provides. Fortunately, we have the ability to do that now, but you're going to likely have to reconsolidate. You're going to likely have to restructure your existing business in order to get it to a point where it is functional to get it to a point where the things that are working now and today and the things that will work tomorrow are being developed and worked on immediately. If your income has stopped, if your income has stopped or slowed down dramatically, you need to wake up and not think things are going to go back to normal. You must change. You must adjust. You must step up your increase, increase your activity today because nobody is coming for you. 
Nobody's going to save you if your income has stopped or slowed down or reduced. Something has to change because the market is different from what it was a year ago. Who noticed that in COVID, right? The market changed. It market changed overnight. It was completely different. We survived and thrived because we made the change faster. We asked ourselves, what is the biggest change? It's virtual. Excellent. Let's go all in on virtual. We always had the ability to go back to in-person live events. That, that never. We already built the asset. We could always go back but we shut down every single live event we were running, every single business that operated live, we shut it down. We shifted all focus energy onto Zoom and the virtual space. We built Alchemist Nation. We built Alchemist Properties. We built Alchemist Connect. Over the last, over the last 12 months, uh, 14 months now, we've built four different digital platforms that are all, and we built Alchemist Financial. So five digital platforms that are all based in the real estate space technology companies. We shifted to technology because we could not do the in-person stuff anymore. It was gone. It was wiped out because we were so focused on one cause. One cause is build millionaires. That's our main focus. Does it build millionaires? We'll do it. If it doesn't build millionaires, we won't do it. And when COVID hit, it took away a lot of our options to building millionaires. Networking is our main strategy for building millionaires. Who's noticed that you hang around people who want to grow, you grow. You hang around people who've already gotten there, you find out how to get there. You hang around people who are above you, they invest in you or with you. So we know the secret to building millionaires is networking. It's one of the businesses that I suggest people build right now. Build a business around networking, get the sponsorships, get the workshops, get the coaching, the mentorship, get the raising of capital, get the marketing fees for being a marketer, for finding them off-market deals, get the commissions for being an agent, partner in their deals, get, get access and equity to the deals by doing the flips and the holds, by being the partner who brought whatever they were missing. But don't put yourself all at risk and try to do just creative financing strategies. Get somebody else to pay for your marketing. Get somebody else to pay you for the deals. Get somebody else to pay you for raising the capital for the deal. Syndication model. Hence, can't you understand? We're shifting how we operate business. And I refuse to let any of you fail. I refuse to let you follow this path of wholesaling or agency specifically without having the seven streams of income that an investor can make in this market. Well, six that an investor can make, seven that an investor-friendly agent can make. Because you still get those commission checks. Hands to care if you're a licensed agent, know a licensed agent. Yeah, don't miss out on stream number six, right? That is uh, the commission check. I recently mind mapped uh, the seven streams of income. Who'd be interested in seeing it? I talk about these in the Recession Proof Challenge. So I just mind mapped this about five minutes ago. So I apologize for the bright colors and the simplicity of this. But here's how it works if you run a live event. A live event called the Multifamily Network. It's live networking for people who want to invest in multifamily. By the way, I did this specifically for people who are like Larry Steinhaus or Stephen Beaver who are looking to raise capital, looking for large sums of money from other investors. What you call your network will dictate who shows up in the room. Large multifamily, multifamily network or passive multifamily investing. These are going to attract investors with money who want passive income, who are thinking multifamily, not these little guys who... Uh, I never do an event that says how to buy houses with no money down, right? I won't do an event that's like, hey, here, learn how to subject to. By the way, Larry Steinhouse teaches subject to. So I can just send you that way if you want to learn how to do it. Then from the multifamily network, you get seven streams of income immediately from that network. But also you can run a wholesaling boot camp if you want deals because the people who show up to the multifamily network will have wholesalers in the room. Hence the care if you know wholesalers show up to every single real estate event out there. So it doesn't matter which one you name it, they're going to show up. Wholesalers can now bring you deals and they can run local landlord groups, which Alchemist Connect already built them out for you. So, so to manage those, we have the software to build those groups so that you get access to the leads by being the person who builds the list for them and their marketing source through Alchemist Connect to get the landlord group built so that they now have access to off-market properties and cash buyers of properties because the landlords in the city are both the cash buyers and they're both the cash sellers. And Scanford recognizes this is obvious common sense, and yet nobody's doing it. So what our mission is, our one focus this year is to build 5,000 landlord associations across the country, leveraging this community, as long as this community continues to want to make money. If you don't want to make money, then you know, be gone. <laughs> We've clearly done our job, and you're welcome, and you, know, you don't have to stick around anymore. Here are the seven streams of income, all of which we've already built out so that you can make profit. Uh, bring in mentors and coaches like St Larry Steinhaus or Steven or some of the other coaches that you see in, in the programs. Workshops run by these coaches. You get to charge up front. You get a commission from working with these coaches. You get to charge up front for their workshops. Sponsorship of events. 
This is one of our biggest streams of income. This is lenders, attorneys, financial planners, real estate agents. They pay for our events. And then marketing services from off-market deals. Alchemist Connect has something called Alchemist uh, Acquisitions, which is a $5,000 charge. We pay 10% to anybody who sells that service. Get your investors to invest in this. You get off-market lists. We do all of the work. You just have to show up to the appointments. Capital raising for investors. This is something you do when you have people who you've already sold their houses to, right? So you've already sold their house. They made a hundred thousand. They made a quarter million. They're like me. They made, they walked away with a million dollars. What are they going to do? You ask them what they're doing. They invest in the deals that you suggest they invest in. You can either partner with your projects or you can just make money uh, two points or four points. And it's care if you know lenders make two to four points for bringing money to a deal. So even if you don't close the deal yourself, you can still get paid to help somebody else close a deal. Then there's commissions from closings. This is for realtors only. Uh, but wholesalers, I guess you get a commission from flipping a contract. So I guess it's kind of in there. We'll call it a wholesale fee. And the final retirement plan is your partnering and your flips and rentals. So this is where all of this activity, all of this connecting with people, getting paid for your marketing, getting paid to start and build your retirement plan. Eventually you get to partner on whatever part of real estate you don't want to do. So for me, I don't want to do the work. I don't want to find the deals, but I have no problem bringing the capital. I partner with people who found deals and did the work. And so I just bring capital because, hey, I got a big network of people I've helped sell real estate to, uh, so help sell their real estate from. And if you recognize this is a simple path, it's a stream of income. All it takes is showing up to one call, one time per month, one live event, as long as all you do all month long is drive traffic to your live event. All month long, you drive traffic to your live event. You teach your wholesalers how to run their local boot camps. You teach your wholesalers how to run their local landlord groups. And then you allow them to send you the money and the deals and you just run them through the funnel. And the funnel already exists. It's called alchemistnation.com. Hence the camera, if this was a fun example of a business model. It's the only business model I believe in. By the way, I showed the numbers the other night. This makes one hundred and fifty to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars without agent commissions, as long as you put five hundred people through your event throughout the year. That means forty to fifty people have to show up ten times, ten months. Hence, can if you recognize you can do that. It's very easy. Who's been to an event with more than forty people in it? One monthly event. All it takes is a handful of clients a handful of people to be on this. There's actually 13 streams of income within those seven. If you're not making money right now, it's just because you haven't pivoted. It's because you're stuck on some old idea. If you're not making money right now, these are recession proof. Investors invest in a market that is down. Investors invest in cash flowing assets when the market goes sideways. Who is recognizing sell the picks and shovels, baby? That's what Alchemist Nation is all about. That's, that's our main focus this next year is serve our community selling the picks and shovels. Serve our coaches by giving them stages to speak on. Serve our, our investors by giving them education so that they can go and invest intelligently and not take risks and not make mistakes. Serve our agents by bringing them investors through the Landlord Association. Serve our wholesalers by giving them an opportunity to get off-market deals and build real relationships and cash buyers lists. Serve our investors, our lenders, by giving them assets to invest in because they got the money and they're looking for a place to put it. And they're, they're begging me, they're like, what can I invest in? What can I invest in? It's like, well, all right, I got to build a system to find all these deals and see who is actually qualified to do the deals. Solving problems in one industry through one means, one focused means, means that we as a community can all benefit, all increase our income. Now, will some of you make more than others? Of course. All right, the Larry Steinhouses who have been you know, making 600000 a year, a million dollars a year, will always do better than the people who are used to making forty, sixty thousand 60000 because you just don't want it bad enough. You don't believe you deserve what he believes he deserves. And Karen, if that makes sense. We understand where I'm going with this. So our biggest work will be getting guys like Doug McGurk in here to get your mindset right, to get you believing in yourself, to getting you on the, on the seven figure, uh, six figure jump starts with Steven to make sure that you're doing the things to get to a six figure earning. So this year we've got our work cut out for us, but it's simpler because it's just one thing. It's just one drive. It's just building the right event for the right people and then expanding and scaling and allowing others in. Your business grows when it's not focused on you and when you're not the only person who matters. Your business grows when you put all your eggs in one basket and you guard that basket. Hence the camera if this was valuable for you. Got your mind thinking a little bit. We're going to do an exercise. We're doing an exercise every week. We're running this a little bit longer than usual, but 
Every week we do an exercise. I want you to write down all your different businesses, all your different business ideas. I want you to write them all down. <laughs> Some of you are like, oh shit, I'm gonna need two pages. <laughs> yeah, write them down, write all the businesses, write them all down. For some of you, this will take a minute. For some of you are like, I don't even have one. Cool. Write down whatever you did last for money. Some of you don't want to admit that is. You don't have to put that in the chat. <laughs> I worked a job for someone else. Ah. <laughs> some of you are like cleaning toilets. I met a woman at the gym the other day. She's a doctor, literally a fucking doctor. And yet she she's cleaning houses. And she she her eyes were downcast when she said, I clean houses right now. I said, woman, don't like... Be proud of what you're doing. She's from Cuba or Dominican. She's from like another another country. I said, look, you're a doctor. You already proved. You, you proved that you were smart. You came to America and you're cleaning toilets because you're also fucking smart, right? You got the hustle. You, you know how to build this thing. And I explained to her, I know a lot of business owners who have million dollar cleaning companies. So I said, look, just stay focused. Keep going. So write down your business. Write down what, what it is you got. What, you know, all of them. And I want you to look at the one that feeds the other ones, the one that feeds the other ones. This training company feeds the other businesses that we operate. Right? Alchemist Nation feeds the deal flow, the investments, the money. It feeds the, the labor, the people who are going to do the work. It feeds all of that by being a marketing company, by being a networking company, a company that brings people together. Hence, if you're seeing the business plan, I showed you just now, if you saw the value of the business plan, we just bring people together and we Put them into the right places by serving, serving, just organizing and collecting, like Mitch Jorsky says. That's what Alchemist Connect is designed to do. It organizes people and collects them. It collects them and puts them into the right folders so that we can go and work with them.